Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez for LearnSolidWorks.com. And in this series, we're gonna talk about creating this dog. And it's an interesting artistic piece. It's not something you would typically try to do in SolidWorks, right? It's, it's very smooth, it's rounded, it's organic. Uh, there's no hard edges anywhere on it. So it's, it's obviously a challenge. It's something that's gonna take some surfacing skills. So hopefully we can learn that through this video. The first step for something like this is to start a new file, and I have a metric file. I'm going to start sketching on my front plane. Go to in, go to Tools, Sketch Tools, and Sketch Picture. I want to insert this into my design. Right? So the scale is obviously kind of important. I want to place the origin somewhere in the middle of the body, and I'm going to leave it at whatever scale it comes in. Right? It's, it's okay because we're not making an actual product. And then I want to put 50% transparency on this, or roughly 50%. We're gonna go ahead and say okay and exit the sketch. Now this is gonna be the basis sketch for moving forward. Now, it's not identical, it's not exact. Uh, we're really just focusing on making everything nice and smooth. So we're gonna look at some tools. We're working in SOLIDWORKS 2016 here. A lot of the tools that we have are available in 15 as well. And also uh, if you are working with 2017, there's some new additional tools that'll make it a little bit easier for you. So let's go ahead and start our first sketch. So on the front plane, the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna draw a straight line from about right here and uh, over to here. Now, as you can see, that actually looks pretty good, like the back might be straight. So we're gonna draw another line down here and you notice that it might be straight down there as well, just at a little bit of an angle, that's okay. The reason for this second line is really just to see how the body is going to fall. Now, what I want to do is I want to start this um, as a revolve, typically, if this thing is a completely rounded profile. Since we don't know that for sure, what we're going to do is we're going to create boundary surfaces for both sides. So I want to add some more references in here. So I'm going to do some four construction, go from midpoint to midpoint, and I'm going to make these vertical. Now, again, we're dealing with images that have perspective on them, so we're we really, we, we don't have a good side view, so we have to take some allowances. So I'm gonna add some just generic dimensions because I don't want this thing to move around. I'm gonna make this 100 millimeters long. I wanna make sure that this actually intersects the origin. Uh, I'm not gonna do a midpoint relation, but I wanna make sure that it intersects. And I'm gonna say that this is uh, 17 above, and this one here is equal in width but it can still float around, right? So we wanna make sure that we give it a dimension as well. So we're gonna say 50 millimeters. So we're looking at roughly 100 by 50 here, and this is gonna be the top and the bottom of the start of this profile. All right, so with these lines, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create two extrudes. I'm gonna take them back away from us. Dimension doesn't really matter. They're just gonna be there to sort of help us out. And we're gonna do a boundary surface. I'm gonna go from this edge to this edge. I'm gonna give them both tangency. And I'm gonna control the shape of this. I'm gonna to have to flip this one around. I'm gonna control the shape of this by looking at the weight of it, right? So I can take this handle and I can pull it out and take this one and pull it out as well. And when we look at it from the back, we wanna get a rough idea of, of the shape that we're looking at. Now it's a good idea to actually come back once you move these around and manipulate them with numbers Sometimes one's gonna be, in this case, five and four, and this gives us a good estimate of the shape, right? So looking at it, I wanna reduce a little bit. I'll make this one four, maybe make this one three, and that looks like a nice rounded profile. Now, if you want it to be perfectly even, you can make them both the same number, but in this case, it's gonna be okay for us. And even though I don't need to do it at this point, I'm gonna mirror this, I'm mirror this body, about the front plane and I want to knit them together. Then I can hide my helper surfaces. All right, so this is the start of it. This is the start of the body. Now, what do we want to do at this point, right? Because at this point, the front and the end really should be nice and smooth and rounded out, but I'm not going to worry too much about it until I have the legs because the way that the legs and the head and everything intersect, I'm going to start to draw those by themselves and then we're going to worry about connecting it all together. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna follow a very similar process for the head, right? 
But this time, I'm going to stop before that rounded section. I'm only going to take it to here, and then I'm going to do it uh, to here as well. Now, in this case, I'm not too worried about symmetry and having them lined up and having them the same length. I really just want to focus on those lines. They're underdefined, but I'm going to do the same process here. I am going to, in this case, I'm going to do a boundary surface from this line to this line, and we're going to look at the difference in control here. Now, we don't have tangency, but we do have normal to profile. So if we do normal to profile on both of them, you might need to flip one around. Let's go ahead and give the upper one four and the lower one three. Now, in this case, it gives us the exact same kind of control. I don't need to worry too much about, uh, in this case, having tangency because we're not really doing anything spectacular. And then again, I can, I can mirror these both about the front plane and this is the body to mirror and I'll knit them together. All right, so now we got the starting of the head and we've got the starting of the body. All right, let's focus on rounding this head off. So I'm gonna to go to the front plane and I wanna to start to create this curve here. I'm gonna do this with a style spline. Now, even though it's probably um, very close to being an arc, I'm gonna go ahead and put one point in the middle and then we're gonna do one, two, and three lines and hit escape. We're gonna take, because this was mirrored, I, I have a point, I have an edge, I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make these uh, collinear because this is horizontal. And I'm gonna make these three collinear. I'm also gonna make them equal. I'm gonna do the same process at the top. I'm gonna make this one collinear or tangent. Again, the uh, we're dealing with a mirror, so we know that that line is actually horizontal because we sketched it that way. I'm gonna make these collinear and equal as well. So now as we're looking at this, all right, we want to go ahead and we want to give this some sort of nice rounded blended shape. And again, we're not trying to perfectly replicate anything. We're just looking at how we're going to make this geometry. And we want to look at this from more of a visual perspective, right? We don't, we're not dealing with a hard mechanical type part where we have very specific dimensions. We're just looking at rough, roughly how this would work. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to do another extruded surface and take it out that direction and say, okay, I want to hide sketch one for a minute um, because I want to just make sure that we can see what we're dealing with here. All right. So now what I want to do is take a filled surface and go from this edge to this edge. And I want to apply a tangency to both of those. Now, remember again, we're dealing with tangency here because Curvature is not really going to do much for us because we're dealing with extruded sections. But let's go ahead and let's try a curvature and see if anything changes for us. Now, because in this specific case, we're dealing with a filled surface and it has complete control over the entire boundary, a curvature relation will give you a slightly different result than tangency as opposed to something like this boundary surface uh, because when we're dealing with a closed boundary and filled surface, we have a, like a fifth order differential in here. And it's going to take into account both the starting and the ending. And because they actually intersect at a point, um, it's going to need that additional control. So let's go ahead and we're going to do curvature on both of them. And we're going to say, okay, then I can hide this. I can mirror that. And again, we really don't need to be mirroring this stuff all the time. We could do it all at once. Uh, but I kind of like to do this at, at this stage because it allows me to visualize things a little bit better. I'm going to knit these together. I'm going to say, okay. So we now have a nice smooth transition. I can go back and I can show sketch one again. And you can see here that we have, uh, you know, basically a nice smooth front of this dog. So now the next thing that we want to do is we want to figure out how we're going to connect it to this. Uh, so at this point, it makes sense for us to come back and make the front of the dog. So I'm going to go back to boundary surface one and the sketches that we use for surface extrude, and I'm going to reduce their length. I'm going to say 80 millimeters. And I'm going to rebuild this. So it shortens up the front of the dog here. It shortens up the back. And what we can do is we can come back and use the same process that we did here. Now, depending on this, let's, let's actually shorten it up just a little bit, give us a little bit more room to work. And now we can go back and make a sketch to, to finish this off. So again, we're going to use a style spline. We're going to start at the top here. Um, in this case, I can drag these three out horizontal. 
And I can do the same thing down here and connect them back. So we're gonna make that coincident. We're gonna make this one tangent or collinear. And we'll make these three collinear and equal. And we'll do the same thing at the top. When you're dragging these out and you're starting to sketch a style spline and it looks like it's applying that horizontal relation, it's only temporary. Uh, it's unfortunately, it's not persistent. Uh, so it's not allowing us to really apply those on the fly. It would be kind of helpful if we could, but in this instance, we really can't. All right, so now we have these, they are um, equal and collinear. And again, we just wanna get it into a situation where we have that nice round section here. And we make, of course, we don't again have a very good reference here, but we make it about what we think it would look like and we'll do uh, an extruded surface. Now you might be wondering, why, we, why are we doing an extruded surface? Now, in this case, if we use a filled surface from here, this edge to this edge, with the sketch, we don't have curvature um, because it, it's a sketch, it doesn't allow us to apply that curvature relation to it. So in this instance, whereas a boundary, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. In the instance of, uh, in this case, a, a filled surface, it absolutely makes a big difference and we have to have an actual edge to select. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do curvature again on this, allow it to sort of fill in the gaps and notice that our preview went away for a second, but we rotate it and it's okay. We'll go ahead and we'll hide this. Uh, and again, just for sort of visual references, we could 100% absolutely just model half of this and mirror it at the end. But because I like to see what we're working on here and it might help you guys visualize this a little bit better, I'm gonna go ahead and mirror it. So notice that this one does not produce the same sort of nice rounded profile that we were dealing with. And if we go back into surface fill, we don't really have control over the weight, right? We, we can't really come in and do much besides uh, turn off optimized surface and then it gives us a slider for resolution control, but um, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't help us get that additional weight. All right, so we wanna make sure 100% that we come back in here and that curvature is applied, make sure it's nice and smooth and say okay. So now in this case, it's not actually allowing us to apply an equal curvature. It, it's only allowing that tangency. So what this tells me is we might need some additional control over this, because uh, this is not working, it's not nice and smooth. So let's look at how we could do that. Let's show this. Let's go back to um, this plane here. We're actually gonna do a, a reference plane that's offset the other direction. We're gonna take it down, and that looks like it's roughly about the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna go ahead and work with that. So now on this plane, we wanna start a new sketch, and I, I hide it, I don't like to see the planes. I know where they are, I, I created them. I'm gonna go ahead and do a new sketch. Go to Convert Entities and Intersection Curve and grab these two. And that gives us the references we need, right? So we can take these, make them both construction, and then do again our style spline, right? So we're going from here, one, two, three, midpoint, one, two, three, back to here. So we're gonna take this edge, make them collinear, then we'll take this one, and these three, make them collinear and equal. And you can see that it sort of pushes them out, but we can and go ahead and um, undo that equal relation. So it made it equal with this line here, and that was the problem here. We want to take just this one, and this one, and this one, and make them equal. We'll do the same process over here. We'll make this collinear. Make sure we deselect that original line. We'll make these three collinear and equal, and then take a look at this from the top view. All right. So it looks like we have an intermediate point in here we don't need. I've just hit delete on the keyboard and we're gonna use these to control the weight of this, all right? So pull it out until it looks about right. And again, we're only really dealing with visuals here. Then we'll do a filled surface, again, from this edge to this edge. Now remember, it only allowed us to apply tangency, but now we have a constraint curve that we can use. And the constraint curve will help some. It will not help completely, but it will help some by pushing that geometry out where we need it. Then I can get rid of this and then I can deal with the mirror if I want to, right? Just to be consistent, let's go ahead and mirror this around the front plane, and we'll mirror this body, we'll knit the surfaces. 
All right, let's bring back sketch one and let's take a look at this so far. All right, so far we've looked at two sort of different things, right? We did some boundary surfaces to make the body and the head. We looked at a filled surface here, which in the first case, because of the geometry worked very well, filled surface with curvature continuous relation. Down here, it didn't work out so well. We needed an additional constraint curve. And now we wanna talk about building the geometry from here to here. All right, so again, start on the front plane. We'll follow the same sort of workflow, style spline. And this time I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna drag out three lines, put an intermediate line, and then and that last one will snap up here. Then we wanna take this, make it collinear with that, Take these three lines, make them collinear. You're probably getting tired of hearing this by this point, but it's the exact same process over and over again. Now these three, I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make them collinear first, equal, and then I wanna take it, this first one, and make it collinear with that. Maybe make it a little bit easier. All right, so now we wanna drag these out and we're trying to control the shape and again, um, because of uh, our geometry and where things lie, we're really not super focused on matching this picture. It has a lot of perspective on it. We're really dealing more with the idea of creating these shapes. All right, so this helps us go from the top of the head down to here. The bottom of the head, it's gonna be an interesting situation because what it does is it, it's actually rolling into the legs. We haven't made the legs yet. But we wanna go ahead and we're gonna say okay to this sketch. We're gonna take our top plane we're gonna to go to our curves menu, split, and do an intersection with the front. We're just gonna go ahead and we'll grab everything here just so that we have the entire curve, right? So we didn't break anything up. It's still one surface on the front, one on the back, but we've added an edge here that we can now go to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another sketch on the front, same exact process. We're gonna use the style spline. We're gonna go from here. We're gonna come out three, we're gonna put an intermediate point, and then in this case, we're just gonna add two. And we're gonna take this point to this intersection, and we're gonna make it tangent with this. Now you notice that it produces a problem here. It's telling me that it cannot make this line tangent. Now even though it's saying that, what we can actually do is we can say that we can make these two tangent. You see that it's saying it's overdefined as well. There's too much control over this. So let's start from the top, and let's see if we can work with it from up here. We're gonna take these three, we'll make them collinear, we'll make them equal, and then we're gonna make sure that they are collinear with this as well. And that gives us the control we need up there. Then we're gonna take this line and this line and make them collinear. And then we'll rotate this around and we'll look at this curve here. Sometimes it might be easier to hide sketch one. What we're trying to do is we're trying to control the curvature of this with this edge here, but it is absolutely 100% not liking it. It thinks that it's overdefining it, even though we can very easily drag this around. Sometimes, and I, I don't know why this happens, but sometimes you might need to grab a different edge, try that, and if it doesn't work, we might need to grab this and convert entities. So once we've converted entities, sometimes it'll let us apply that tangency. In this case, it's not allowing it, so let's just keep trying other combinations and let's go to uh, tangent with that. So it allowed us to take this edge, our first control, and apply a tangent relation with this edge. Now it's exactly the same thing that we were trying to do. Why it works in some cases and not in others, I have absolutely no idea. But sometimes you just need to be a little persistent and, and work at it. But now we have the bottom of the head here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to blend this shape down into this shape. So we're gonna do a boundary surface going from this edge. And we wanna go down to this edge here. So it's an interesting combination. We're gonna try the selection manager and we're gonna to go to here and here and see if we can make this work. And then we're gonna use direction to guide here and guide here. All right, so this is where we start to see issues. We're starting to produce a problem because we're going from a single curve down to two curves and the two curves unfortunately go to a point, right? So if we apply things like uh, tangency with these edges and up top, if we apply tangency with these edges and down here we go uh, normal to profile, we'll do normal to profile here. We start to get into a situation where the shape might, it might be okay, we'll look at it, but we've got this sort of curve ripple in it. Now, how do we get around that? 
Well, let's go back to this boundary surface. Let's take a look at deleting the open group two. All right, now if we delete open group two, we have a tangent with the front, we have normal to profile with this and normal to profile with this. And what we're actually doing is we're creating, we're kind of taking this shape and we're pushing it down into here. Now notice it does fine, it's nice and smooth without sort of the other influence here. And we can push the tangency influence from the top, but it still doesn't give us a nice sort of relation that we're looking for. In order to make this work, we need to do one more thing here. So we're gonna to go to our top plane and we're gonna look at, I'm gonna convert this edge and I'm gonna convert this edge and then I'm gonna hide this, that body here, right? So I'm gonna hide this, so I'm not looking at it. I'm gonna hide this and what we're doing is we're looking at a top-down view of the area that we have to work with, right? So I'm gonna go make these two a uh, construction line and then I'm gonna create a spline that goes from here to here. I'm gonna drag these handles out and I'm gonna make them tangent with this and I'm gonna make it tangent with this. Now what we're looking at from the top view is gonna be the area that we want the neck to uh, sort of go into. Now it's, it's hard to really say where this falls, again, based on the pictures that we have, but we know that it's nice and smooth. So we're just gonna make a spline that looks nice and smooth and we're gonna say, okay. Now if we bring our surfaces back, we can then take the sketch, go to our curves, split line, and we're gonna project it onto this face. So what we've done is we've now split this up one more time. We can make a boundary surface that goes from one edge to one edge. And then we can use our direction two curves here and here, and we can apply all the relations that we want. So this is gonna be interesting because we don't really want to apply a tangency here. We don't necessarily want to apply a tangency here because it's gonna produce some additional issues for us, but we certainly want to apply a tangency at the top and we wanna keep it normal to profile for the bottom edges, or for direction two rather. Let's go ahead and say okay. And you can see that even though we don't have tangency, uh, it was able to bring the shape down. Now what this is telling me is that the head is probably a bit too wide uh, for what we did here. We might need to reduce the size of the head and that's very easy for us to do because remember we did a boundary surface for the head and we controlled it using the weight. So if we make the head a little bit narrower, we might need to change the front here. We make the head a little bit narrower. Uh, that does narrow this up a little bit. And then we can go back to sketch nine and maybe increase where sketch nine hits here. So moving all these things around are helping, right? So you can see it's nice and smooth. We can, uh, we can go back and we can trim things up and we can put everything together. But for the most part, that's all nice and smooth. Let's go back into our boundary surface one more time. And on this bottom edge, let's go ahead and apply tangency now that we've widened it out and let it blend itself in smoothly. Let's go ahead and say, okay. Now you see that we have a smooth transition. Now these types of things will take a little bit of time. And if you have one of these to look at, put your hands on, you can get a better idea of where the geometry goes. Just looking at pictures, it's a little bit hard for us to do. All right, so now we're working with uh, this side of the face, everything looks nice and smooth. I'm gonna take it back a little bit. I'm gonna use delete face, and I'm gonna delete everything on uh, the back side of what we're looking at. Go ahead and say okay. So now we're dealing with just the half, and I wanna go ahead and delete this face as well. So now I can knit everything together. So again, all that stuff originally was more just sort of a visualization, so we could look at what we were doing. Now we're starting to get into a more final shape. The process from here on out is identical to what we've done so far. Yeah, so we need to carry on the back. So we're gonna do a front plane. We're going to, um, again, I'm gonna use a, a standard spline this time. I'm gonna put a midpoint in here. And again, when we're, when we're dealing with these, standard splines are not going to have the same amount of control and the quality of the surface is not gonna be the same. Uh, I'm gonna delete the midpoint and I'm just gonna use the handles to control this. But sometimes using a standard spline is gonna be quicker. Since we already know the process, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna extrude this. Um, again, I'm gonna take it out this way and we'll do a filled surface from here 
Now this time we have multiple selections. We're gonna do curvature, see if it allows us to do that. Say okay, hide that, and we'll knit this piece together. Now ultimately, if you're making this as a final file, you would not want to continuously knit these together. Uh, sometimes knitting them together makes sense if you need to cut certain pieces away. But if we go down into looking at things like feature statistics, uh, the performance of knitting these together sometimes hinders things. All right, so we're gonna carry on the process to take care of the tail and the two legs. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do for the tail is, again, just do a sketch. All right, so we're gonna sketch on the front plane, show the original, and we're gonna follow the same process, except for this time, I'm gonna do a revolve. And the revolve we're gonna use uh, to blend into the body. So we're gonna take this out, and in this case, I'm gonna use a three-point arc from here to here. And I want to do a reference line that is perpendicular to this line. And that controls the tangency here. I make sure that's tangent there. And that'll give us our, uh, our revolve. Now, because it is a surface, I'll make this con construction here and here. And we'll do a surface revolve. All right, we need to go into our selected contours, make sure that we have everything selected here. And notice that it's producing an error. Now it's because I forgot to make one of these lines construction. We'll just need to make sure that one's construction as well. And then we'll do our revolve surface. All right, so this is our axis of revolution. And then we can take that and we can blend it down in just like we did the other areas. Now for the legs, we're gonna do the same process as well. Uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna do the exact same process. I'm gonna sketch a little bit differently. I'm gonna sketch it on the front plane and we'll take a perpendicular line out there as well, make it construction, do a three-point arc. Now the main difference here is we're gonna to have to rotate this around, right? So we'll make that tangent, we'll draw the other line here. This line will be construction, and these two will have tangency. And then we'll do a revolve, and this will be our axis of revolution. And then we'll need to go to insert, features and down to move copy. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that and uh, we wanna make sure that we're on translate and rotate. We're gonna move it out and we're gonna rotate it. And you'll have to do this in two separate steps. All right, so we'll need to rotate it in one direction. We'll say okay, and then we'll repeat that. So we'll go down to our um, move copy under recent commands. We'll grab this and we'll simply move it out where it needs to be. All right, so I'm gonna show you the process of the tail and the leg and how we would blend those together. All right, so again, the top plane allows us to do a split line where it intersects this geometry. All right, so that gives us an area where we can uh, blend it together. And the same thing with the tail. So all we need to do is we need to split it up just like we did the head and uh, just carry these down into our shape. So from our top plane, I want to decide where the tail is going to uh, going to blend. So I'm going to do this by drawing a circle and simply projecting that circle by using split line and project it down onto various areas and make sure that we break it up. So then we can take our boundary surface going from here down to here. Now keep in mind that we do still need to split these revolves by using an intersection, and we'll split those up. All right, so that allows us a much easier selection process going from here, using our selection manager and grabbing these two edges, and then allowing us to control the tangency. So that shows us how we can blend the tail in, and it's the exact same process for doing the legs, so this is probably a good time to save your file. Pause the video and give that a try on your own. Now that you guys have had a chance to try this out, let's go ahead and complete the model. All right, so first thing we wanna notice is that the leg crosses over the mid plane. Now it's not necessarily a good thing. And depending on the model we're looking at, and again, if you have one of these uh, on hand, that might produce a problem. And the leg is actually pretty big in this case. 
So while we look at it from the side, it looked like it was you know about the right size. When we look at it from the front or the back, the leg looks to be too large. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna modify that. All right, so let's take a look at the revolve surface for the leg. And I wanna look at the sketch and modify it. Now you may or may not wanna do this. You may wanna change the way that the leg is created. Instead of doing a revolve, you can do a boundary surface like we did for the main body and the head. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna make this leg a little bit thinner. And again, we need to just do a few tweaks we want to make sure that this has tangency here and we might want to pull this in just a little bit and we'll say okay all right so once the legs a little bit smaller you see that it doesn't really cross over the mid plane here it's going to end up blending uh, sort of just a little bit here all right so as we look at this if we want to blend this leg in we should probably make it a little bit shorter as well and again these are all things that we're going to do to this original sketch and I'm gonna make sure that these two are actually parallel as well. Go ahead and say okay, and make that leg a little bit shorter. All right, so now what we're looking at is transitioning this into this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take a reference plane based off of this geometry, and we wanna create a sketch here. So I'm gonna hide the plane, but then I wanna create a sketch. We're gonna look at this normal two. Now, in my solid, or my surface bodies, I'm gonna hide the last boundary surface and make sure that we hide this last leg as well. So body move copy, let's go ahead and do that and we'll show this boundary surface here. So again, we're gonna look normal too. And taking a look at our body move copy, this is the size that we're dealing with. And the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna make a circle. We're gonna just draw a circle here and we're gonna grab this edge and we're gonna to try to make them concentric, right? And again, normal two, I like to use control eight on the keyboard, but you can do it however, uh, however you like. If you wanna come up and do a normal two uh, up here, that'll work as well. So now that we have this, I am gonna give it a dimension. I'm just gonna say 24 millimeters. Now this dimension is big enough so that it's larger than this, the leg, but it doesn't actually go into the midline right here. All right, we still want a little bit of material here to help drive our tangency. So now we're gonna take this and do a split line. So we're gonna project this onto all the areas of concern. So we wanna make sure that we hit everything, say okay, and now we've split that up, all right? So just to make sure that this is very apparent, we're gonna delete all the stuff inside of this. So this is the area that we're gonna to blend to. So we're gonna do a boundary surface going from here Right click to selection manager. And I'm gonna use this little box which applies a tangency or it carries that around to anything that's tangent and we're gonna say okay. Now the first thing you'll notice is it's not working. We need to rotate it around until this point is roughly at the same. Go ahead and drag it out just a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and apply tangency to both of these. We're gonna say okay and let's see if that actually creates it. All right, so it's not creating a usable section. Now, there's actually a good reason for this. Uh, the reason for this is because this guy right here, uh, it blends, it's pretty close to it right here, but it's pretty far away. Now, hopefully you're starting to see it. This is actually the more complicated of the challenges here. Now, we've, we've done a bunch of blends before. We did the neck for the dog, the tail here, um, as well as the outside here. Now, as we're looking at this, a few things that you should start to think about. Uh, the first thing is extending the surface and we're gonna extend it all the way out to go inside of this, okay? Now, once we do that, I wanna come back to this delete face and I actually wanna delete it and I wanna do an offset surface, all right? I'm gonna put in five millimeters and I wanna grab all the faces that we split here. So it's three of them, I wanna grab all of those and five millimeters looks like it might be a bit much. Let's try two and a half. All right, two and a half looks pretty good. We're gonna say okay. And then we're gonna use this as a trim tool. We're gonna to get rid of anything on top of that. I'm gonna say okay. And again, we need to be very careful. These uh, selections are persistent. So you wanna make sure that you use remove selection or reverse that. Right, we're gonna go ahead and hide that. And again, we're gonna delete these faces. We could have just moved that feature down, but sometimes it's just easier to get rid of it and start over. Now let's try to do a blend. 
So we're going to go from a boundary of this edge, and you notice that now it's actually grabbing, it's creating two edges. So I want to clear selection. I'm going to right click and use the selection manager and grab the entire thing. Again, right click selection manager and do the same thing over here. And then we're going to make sure that these points are pretty close. And now we can do tangency, tangency, and see how that controls things. Now it's inducing some very interesting curvature here. Now if we try to do curvature to face, it doesn't really help it out. Uh, sometimes we can reduce the weight of these and it'll help out a little bit. But in this case, they might just be too close to produce a nice blend. Now if that's the case and you're getting this sort of bad geometry, that means one of two things. One, this split here needs to be bigger. The diameter needs to be a bit bigger, or at least you need to carry it out in a non-circular fashion to give that room to blend. The other thing is that we can actually use filled surface on something like this. Now by default, filled surface is gonna to try to fill this closed boundary here, but if we grab more edges, it will actually blend between the two. And uh, this usually will give you a little bit better idea of a surface. We're going to apply to all, and we're going to put a tangency on all of them, and then we're going to say OK. So if we look at this blend, it doesn't have that same sort of pinch point that was happening with uh, the boundary surface. Now, and this is because mathematically speaking in the background, the filled surface is a higher differential. It's a higher order. Uh, it, it goes through more iterations. The way that it blends the surfaces together uh, is much more mathematically stable. So we have a much better, uh, basically a better result here. A few more things that we want to do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the front plane and trim. And I want to trim this. And I'm going to remove selection. So again, we're working with just half of the dog here. And then we need to do sort of the same thing on the front. So let's see where the right plane falls on our, on our design here. And let's go ahead and try to mirror this front leg. So we're going to mirror bodies. We're going to mirror this front leg. And it gets it pretty close. We're going to say OK. And it's actually not too bad. I think we can work with this. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to take this and trim. Now one thing that you might want to do is you might want to take this mirror and you might want to take it before you extend that surface. All right. So what happens is we're not extending the surface and trimming the surface that matches the back. We're going to use this. We're going to create another plane. And that way it helps us sort of work with the geometry we have. So we can create another plane off of this. We can also offset this using surfaces. Again, two and a half will work just fine. We're going to hide this plane. And then we're going to extend these edges. Now we can do an up to surface in this case and extend it here and sort of do away with having to trim it. So it's all kind of depends on the order of operations you do here. And lastly, we want to go ahead and sketch on this plane. And again, we're going to do a circle and we're going to give it a 24 millimeter diameter. And again, we're going to try to make it concentric with this and see if it lets us. So we're going to grab this upper edge now grab this and make them concentric. All right, so that allows us to take this under the curves and do a split wherever it projects onto this. And you wanna make sure that you grab any faces that it might hit, and then we can delete those. All right, so at this point, it's the same thing. We're gonna use filled surface again. I'm gonna grab all the edges that belong to this. You might need to rotate it around to grab all of them. Sometimes the selection's just a little bit tough on some of these. But once we do that, apply to all, we'll add a tangency, and then we'll go ahead and we'll say OK. So again, that result looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. We can knit everything together. So the blend, these filled surfaces, these legs. Notice that we do have some small gaps here, but we're going to use the knitting tolerance, and we're going to allow it to stitch all those together. You notice that it says it can't be knitted, all right? So it's it's producing a problem with something here, all right? So it looks like that something is the tail. So we're gonna have to deal with that. We're gonna go ahead and just uh, forget about the tail for a minute. Uh, the reason that the tail is not knitting is because it didn't delete anything in here. So it's gonna be, again, a very important step. We wanna get rid of all this extra information here. 
I'm going to say OK. And now that will allow us to knit those together. All right, so at this point, the important thing is that we just do a simple mirror. We're going to mirror across the front plane. We're going to make sure that we do bodies to mirror. And we're going to knit those surfaces together. Now, if you knit the surfaces together using the bodies option or using the mirror option, you still have a surface, right? It's completely closed. We want it to be a solid, but we still have a surface here. So what we need to do is take this and we need to go to thicken. All right, we're going to use thicken and we're going to create a solid from enclosed volume. Say, okay, now we have a solid body. So a single thing in the solid bodies folder. If we did a section view of this, you see that it is completely solid. You can do anything else you need to it. If you want to 3D print it using some of the 3D printing tools where you can create a lattice on the inside, uh, it's perfectly fine in this case. Last bit of cleanup is we're going to select all those helper surfaces. We're going to right click and we're going to delete them. So now the file only contains one solid body. Everything's good to go. We can do things like uh, hide the edges, make sure everything's nice and smooth. And probably what I would do is I would come back and maybe work with this neck a bit more. I don't know that that's really the way that this is going to work in reality. But um, again, from the views that we have to work with uh, from the original image, that's sort of where everything lies. But the big things that we want to note in here are the way that we can sort of fill off these cylindrical body sections, whether they're revolved or whether they're boundary surfaces, by using some of the, the tools like filled surface and creating helper, uh, different helper surfaces. So we have the tangency and curvature controls. The way that we did the blends between the neck by splitting up the body and creating that split so it allows us to take this down to a different section. And of course, we use the style spline with all the additional controls that we've learned uh, to help create those blends between the head and the body in this case. The tail, we did a, a boundary between here because we were dealing with really just a half section and that works really well for that. When we got down to the legs and we were dealing with a full circular section, we ended up using a filled surface because it's a higher order differential. It allows us to create that nice smooth blend. Uh, and the last thing that you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and save your file, obviously. So I hope you guys learned a few tricks and you're able to complete this model. If you're not, of course, you know, let us know. We, we do want to help you out. We want you to learn this stuff. But hopefully you have enough tools in your toolbox now to, to create stuff like this and have fun and enjoy.